Comfortable enough. Yet there is happiness there. Who are these people? Who's that woman? And the children? These are the family of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. See his wife, dressed in a twice-turned gown, but brave in ribbons, laying the table for their Christmas dinner. And there, assisting her, is her daughter, Belinda. And the young man with a fork in the stuffing, that's Master Peter Cratchit. And the two little Cratchits. Listen, Scrooge. And watch. Sit you down before the fire, Martha, and have a warm, Lord bless you. Where, Father? He's been to church with Tiny Tim. They'll be along directly. How is Tiny Tim, Mother? Any better at all? Sometimes I think he is. And sometimes I think, oh, dear God, if anything should happen to Tiny Tim. Oh, Mother, you mustn't even Here think of such a thing. Oh, 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 Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, Christmas, Father. Tim. Merry Christmas, Martha. Oh, Tim, you darling. Oh, Father, I'm so glad to be home. And we're glad to have you, Martha. And how did little Tim behave in church, Bob? Uh, as good as gold and better. I like church, Mother. Oh, they sang the nicest songs. I hope people saw me there. Saw you there? And why, Tim? Well, don't you see? Because I'm lame. And if they saw my crutch, it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas who it was who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Bless you, my son. Are we ready to eat, Mother? Oh, come on, children, you're all ready. Come, come, take your place and wait your turn. There's plenty of stuffing and dressing and plum pudding for all of you. Martha, take care of Tiny Tim and see that he eats plenty. Yes, he must mother. get strong and well. Now sit down, everyone. Yes, come on, Tiny Tim. And now, my dears. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner. And the crutch, without an owner, carefully preserved. No, 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 kind spirit. Say he'll be spared. Say he'll live. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, Ebenezer, the child will die. And to pray thy name. Amen. Amen. And now, my dears, with such a dinner, a toast, a Merry Christmas to us all, and God bless us. Oh, God bless us, everyone. And now to Mr. Scrooge. I'll give you a toast to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. Oh, the founder of the feast, indeed, who pays you all a 15 shillings a week. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast on, and I hope he'd have good appetite oh, for it. Oh, dear, the children, Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Bob. Nobody knows it better than you, poor fellow. My dear Christmas Day. I'll drink his health for your sake and the days, not for his. Long life to him. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. And I say God bless him too, Mother, and everyone. Yes, yes, Mr. Yes. Very well, yes. There was nothing of high mark in all this. They were not a handsome family, these Cratchits. They were not well-dressed. Their shoes were far from being waterproof. Their clothes were scanty and had known, very likely, the insides of a pawnbroker's. But they were happy, grateful, pleased with one another and contented with the time. When at last they faded, Scrooge had his eye upon them. And especially on Tiny Tim until the last. Many calls Scrooge made that night with a ghost of Christmas present. Down among the miners they went who labor in the bowels of the earth. And out to sea among the sailors at their watch. Dark, ghostly figures in their several stations. Much they saw and far they went and many places they visited, but always with a happy end. The spirits stood beside sick beds, and they were cheerful, on foreign lands, and they were close at home, by poverty, and it was rich, in almshouse, hospital, and jail, where a vain man in his little brief authority had not made fast the door and barred the spirit out. The spirit left his blessing. 
was a long night. It was only a night. And it was strange, too, that while Scrooge remained unaltered in his outward form, the ghost grew older. Clearly older. My life upon this globe is very brief, Ebenezer. It ends tonight. Tonight? Tonight at midnight. Ah, the hour has come. Oh, not yet. Not yet. No. There are still more things I wish to learn. These you will learn from still another spirit. Still another spirit, Ebenezer. Scrooge looked about him for the ghost that had vanished. But he found himself once more in his bed, in his dressing gown, in his nightcap. He'd heard the clock strike. And then he remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley. And lifting up his eyes, beheld the third spirit. A solemn phantom. Shrouded in black, draped and hooded. Coming towards him slowly and silently, like a mist along the ground. I know you. You, you are the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You will show me the shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. I am a spirit, ghost of the future. Oh, I fear you more than any spectre I've seen. Yet. As I know your purpose is to do me good, and as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, lead on. Lead on! The night is waning fast. Time is precious. Spirit, why have you brought me here again? Here to Bob Cratchit's home? But it's not the same. Why is it so quiet? So very quiet here. <laughs> Mother, please. Oh, my son. My little son. Tell him, Tim. I loved him so. Mother, dear, you mustn't. It's almost time for Father to be home. Don't let him see you crying. Yes. Yes, Mother. He's late tonight. He walks slower than he used to. Yet I've known him to walk very fast indeed with tiny Tim on his shoulder. So have I, Mother. But he was light to carry. And his father loved him so that it was no trouble. No trouble at all. Bob. Good evening, my dear. You're late, Bob. I'm sorry, my dear. I, I went to the churchyard today. I wish you could have gone with me. It would have done your heart good to see how sweet and green a place it is. You'll see it often. I promised him. I promised Tiny Tim we'd walk there on Sunday. Oh, Father, dear. It's God's will, Bob. I'm trying to understand it, my dear. My son. My little son, Tiny Tim. And I loved him so. Oh, that's cruel. Cruel. Spirit. Can't you give me one ray of hope that I may change all that? The tiny Tim may live. shadows of things that will be, or, or are they the shadows of things that may be only? Will, will you not speak to me, Spirit? What is that grave to which you point? <gasps> now I see. There's writing on that stone. The name on the gravestone is Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge. <gasps> Oh, spirit. No, no, no. 
Bennett, hear me. I'm not the man I was. Why show me this? If I'm past all hope, tell me that I may change these dreadful shadows that, that have come, that you've shown me by an altered life. I'll honor Christmas in my heart, and I'll try and keep it all the year. I'll live in the past, the present, and the future. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. Tell me, do, spirit. Please tell me that I can sponge away the writing on that stone, spirit. I beg of you, spirit. Spirit. What's this? It's my bedpost. I'm home. In my own bed. In my own room. And the sun. The sun shines. It's clear. It's bright. No fog. Oh, what a beautiful day. Glorious. Glorious. Boy! Oh, boy! Yes, sir? <laughs> What's today? What's that, sir? What day is it, my fine fella? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day! Christmas Day! Ha <laughs> ha! I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. All in one night. Heaven be praised. How's that, sir? Listen, my lad. Do you know where the poultry is in, in, in the next street? I should say I do. <laughs> An intelligent boy. A remarkable boy. Tell me, do you know if they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging in the window? The one as big as me? <laughs> what a delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, my buck? It's hanging there now, sir. Oh, that's wonderful. Now go around, will you? And tell him to send it to Bob Cratchit and his family on Broad Street. And mind you, they're not to know who paid for it. I'll hurry along, my lad. And here, here, here's half a crown for your trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And a Merry Christmas. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas to you, too, my boy. <sighs> oh, I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather, as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. A Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas to everybody. A Happy New Year to all the world. Next morning, Scrooge was early at his office. He went early for a reason. If he could only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late. That was the thing he'd set his heart upon. And he did it. Yes, he did. The clock had struck nine. No Bob. A quarter past. No Bob. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see him come in. And at last he came. His hat was off before he opened the door. His comforter, too. He was on his stool and jiffy, driving away with his pen, as if he were trying to overtake 9 o'clock. 8 and 17 are 15, carry the 1, 44, carry the 2, 31, carry the 4. 8 and 6 are 14, carry the 8. Hello, you, Cratchit! Yes, sir? Step this way, Cratchit, if you please. Cratchit, what do you mean by coming in at this time of day? Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. I'm behind my time. You are? You are? Yes, I think you are. Oh, it's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. It shall not be repeated. I was I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. I, I'll tell you what, my friend. I'll not stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, Bob Cratchit, I'm about to raise your salary. Mr. Scrooge, are you, are you quite yourself, sir? No. No, thank heaven I'm not quite myself. Merry Christmas, Bob. <laughs> Merry Christmas, my good fella. A merrier Christmas than I've given you in many a year. I'll raise your salary and we'll see what we can do for Tiny Tim and the rest of your family. <laughs> we'll discuss it this very afternoon over a Christmas bowl of smoking bishop. 